Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. I am Dr. Dan Lieberman. I'm the medical director of Phoenix Spine and Joint. I'm also a neurosurgeon, used to be spine surgeon. I had to retire because of essential tremor. And I am delighted to welcome you to this broadcast. Let's talk about you. I'm going to assume that you are somebody with joint pain. And even though I was a spine surgeon, you could have joint pain anywhere. Might be your neck, might be your low back, might be your shoulder, elbow. I don't know. Heck, for all I know, it could even be your knee. But you've got joint pain likely due to arthritis. And like everybody else, you've been hearing about arthritic treatments and miracle cures and things you can do. And one of the things you probably heard about was flaxseed. And you're wanting to know if you should take flaxseed. And if you should take flaxseed, how should you take it? And how much? Well, those are the questions that we're going to answer in this video, every single one of them. We're going to help you decide whether or not flaxseed is right for you. And if it is, I'm going to arm you with the information you need to know how to take it and how much. Spoiler alert, you should take it. <laughs> it's incredible uh, how healthy this little seed is. Um, but, the, you know, even though it's probably not surprising to you to hear me say you should take it, but there's still a lot of really in interesting stuff that has to be individualized to you about how to take it and how much. It comes in an oil, a powder, a seed. Um, you know, you need to know. And it's not one size fits all. Everyone's different. And you need to make a decision for yourself depending on your goals and the other things about your health, which we're going to go over in this broadcast and make a good decision. So listen to the end. If you take this stuff wrong, in my mind, it's like having a Ferrari that never gets out of your garage. Yeah, it's great having something that's so fun and exciting and useful. But if you never use it, is it really worth the money? Now, uh, flaxseed's not as expensive as a Ferrari, but it's a significant commitment. So you don't want to do anything that is not actually helpful to you. So let's, uh, in order to kind of understand and make good decisions, you really have to go back to the beginning of this, and that is arthritis. You've got joint pain due to arthritis. Now, I'm not saying it's your knee, I don't know, but let's talk about the knee as an example. This is the back of somebody's knee, this is the thigh bone, this is the leg bone. The white here is the cartilage, and the red is the inflamed areas. So what hurts here? Yeah, it started out with aging. It's the breakdown in the cartilage, the irregular surfaces. But what hurts on kind of a day-to-day -day basis is not the cartilage. It's not the irregularity. What hurts is the inflammation. That's why if you think about it, your knee doesn't get a lot of cartilage damage just because you go for a walk, right? What flares up and flares down about your joints, what flares up or flares down about your pain is inflammation. So that's where we have this opportunity. We have this opportunity because we can't control how much walking we did or that last ski run we shouldn't have taken 20 years ago. You know, all the past is in the past. We can't control those things. We have the joints we have today, but we have to figure out a way to live with them. And we want to figure out a way to live with them and be totally pain free. Now, is that reasonable? Is that possible? Well, you know, if, from my, if you're a uh, subscriber to this channel, you probably saw my previous broadcast about TOAST, T-O-A-S-T, a, a five-step program for eliminating joint pain, or at least reducing it as much as you can, by reducing your inflammation. I want to point out in TOAST, O was for oil. O stands for oil. And you don't have to be a PhD in biochemistry to remember the saying, 
Nix the six threes for me. What does that mean? Nix the six, omega six. Omega six foods are uh, French fries, um, uh, fried uh, potato chips, processed foods, Velveeta cheese. All these kind of foods are very high in omega six fatty acids. And they're just as inflammatory as all get up. They cause your body to make inflammation and revving that engine, revving that body up and getting all those inflammatory mediators, those interleukins, all those cytokines, getting all that stuff going inside your blood sends it straight to your joints where it causes the inflammation to build around your joints and causes joint pain. Now there is an alternative, omega, and that's threes for me, that's the omega-3. And I mean, you know, that's what you want to eat. Omega-3s are the good stuff, like uh, oily fish, like salmon. There's flaxseed, the thing we're going to talk about today, olive oil, um, sardines, white fish that's oily, legumes like spinaches, uh, salmon, eggs. A lot of dairy is very rich. So kind of a lot of kind of half, uh, a lot of things that are also rich in vitamin D. So these are the kinds of foods that have omega-3s, and omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So remember, when it comes to the anti-inflammatory diet, there's these two parts. One is don't eat the stuff that causes you to get highly inflamed, and the other part is eat the stuff that reduces it. Well, okay, what about flax? Is it really that good for you? I mean, can it, can it really help? Or is it just kind of a flash in the pan? Like, what's the magnitude of this stuff? You're going to hear about a new thing you're supposed to do for your arthritis every day. You know, is it actually worth doing? Or is it just, um, you know, another kind of fad? Well, let's look at the medical literature. There's some really cool information out there that can help you make this decision on whether or not you should be taking flax, and if so, how and how much. Um, here's an article from the uh, journal Nutrients. Good journal, I've heard of it, right? Dietary flaxseed as a strategy for improving human health. Mm, okay, that's what we wanna know, is can we do it? Well, okay, first thing you ask is, it's a good journal, yes. Second, who are the authors? Um, here they are listed out, Department of Physiology and Pathophysiology, College of Medicine, Faculty of Health Sciences, University of Manitoba, Winnipeg. That's a good, that's a good place. I knew the former chairman of neurosurgery there, really cool guy. I have a lot of confidence in that university, that medical school. And look, these authors have 17 affiliations. They're from all over the world and uh, mostly Canada, but every single one of them is looks like a highly qualified individual. Okay, so I, I trust this. This is a credible article. Now let's look and see what it says and see if it makes sense to us. The um, first thing it talks about is how flaxseed can really help with your um, cardiovascular system. Mm, okay, not what we're here to talk about, but you eat dietary flax, reduces inflammation, which lowers your blood pressure, reduces oxidation and apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed, the initiation of programmed cell death. That Those processes in your body are involved with ischemic heart disease, also known as myocardial infarction, AKA heart attack, not something you want. Uh, arrhythmias, dilation, bad stuff for your heart structurally. And then there's kind of a whole nother arm where dietary flaxseed can reduce your circulating cholesterol. Mmm, serum cholesterol, that's a risk factor for heart attack, right? Yeah, so we want to reduce that. Reduce circulating trans fats. Mmm, fat in your blood, that's not good. So it can reduce that, so that's all very important as well. All right, all that's good. Yeah, I want all that. Um, what else can it do for me? Well, what about your guts? I always find this kind of GI stuff kind of gross myself, but you see where we are. Here's the liver, here's the stomach. This is the transverse colon, the descending colon. This is where the poop comes out. So this is your intestines, your intestinal system. And flaxseed, let's just cut to the end, 
helps with your keep your liver healthy from alcohol if you drink even socially, reduces colitis and your risk of colon cancer, both good things, um, and makes you uh, more insulin sensitive, reduces insulin sensitivity. So that's going to help prevent you from becoming diabetic. And if you are diabetic, possibly even help you um, not be so diabetic. Wow. Those are all really good things. And that's not even the anti-inflammatory part that helps your joints, which is also there. So look, we got a credible article that goes through some very sensible biochemical, biophysiological processes from credible medical scientists that really does indicate benefits to taking flaxseed. So look, you should do it. Spoiler alert again, right? You should do it. It's, it's very, very healthy. There's almost no downside. It even helps you poop. It, it eliminates constipation. So it's a really the fiber in it and is, uh, helps your bowels move and it's full of protein. I mean, it's just a, like a one, it's like the blueberry of grains, of seeds in a way. It's like a super seed. It's a super food. You should definitely take this stuff. Okay, you want to take it. If you're not convinced you should take it, then stop. Because the rest of this video is just about, okay, how should you take it? And how much of it should you actually take? Well, first, let's talk about how you should take it. Because remember, it comes in three different sorts of preparations. You can eat the seeds, which are in the background here. You can take flaxseed oil, either as an oil or oil in a capsule, if you don't want to you know, consume the raw oil. Or you can take these seeds and grind them up into a powder. Let me just tell you ahead of time, there's really not a significant difference between, your body's really good at grinding stuff up. You can take the seeds or you can take the powder. They're, they're essentially, uh, they're similar. So I don't, I don't know of a difference between those two. But it turns out there's a huge difference when we look at the oil versus the whole flax. Not only is there a huge difference, but there's a huge difference in what it affects. And to get into this, we're going to have to go to another article. This one's a little bit uh, wonkier, so I'm going, to, I'm going to interpret it for you a little more heavily. But another article from the Nutrition, Nutrition, Nutrition and Metabolism. This is from London, a bridge outfit. Oh, this is uh, last year, 2021, so it's recent. I looked at the authors for you. These are all credible people, Department of Nutrition and Food Hygiene, from um, Japan, or I'm sorry, from the People's Republic of China. These all are very, seem like very credible people um, from a very credible lab. And what they talk about is flaxseed and the published results on it in the medical literature. So this is interesting. It's worth taking a moment to talk about this because what we've got here is a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials on the dose-response nature of flaxseed in various preparations. Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. Meta-analysis. When there's a lot of studies on something, one study may not be conclusive. And so a meta-analysis is a statistical attempt to combine all the studies that were done to try to get stronger results. So, okay, if I enrolled 100 people and I gave some of them flaxseed and some of them not, and then I measured some lipids, you know, I may find a change, I may not. It's not a big power, but if 100 people did that same study and I combined all those results, I'd have 100 hundreds, I'd have 10,000 people who, you know, now we're talking about a really big study with really stronger results. So meta-analysis is really, really, really helpful. Randomized controlled trials. Oh, okay. So the trial was randomized and there was a control. That means I didn't just, you know, go to a birthday party and say, hey, you guys take flaxseed and come back and tell me how you feel. Oh, you feel great? Great. I'll write a study that flaxseed is good for how you feel, you know. No. I'm going to come up with a protocol. I'll have entry criteria, checkbox, yep. Yeah. Hey, you, do you meet all these criteria? Check, 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 yep. Oh, okay, and then there's all these disqualifying criteria. If you have any of these things, you're crazy, you can't fill out a form, you know, check, 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 nope. All of these things are, you're not disqualified. Okay, you're suitable for the trial. 
Now I'm going to flip a coin and I'm going to say, you go in this group, you go in this group. I'm going to give you guys flaxseed or oil or powder. And then I'm going to give you guys a fake one. So it's a control. So we don't even know. You, you probably don't even know what you're getting. You may have the flax, you may have a fake powder, you may have a tablet with the oil in it, you may have a tablet that has nothing in it or, or olive oil or something different. So we got a randomized control trial and we got a meta-analysis, meaning they went through the entire published literature, found all the randomized control trials, and then combined them all together. This is what's called a systematic review, and this is good stuff. This is generally what most people think of as the highest form of evidence. And something really powerful popped out of it. They looked at the effect of the various preparations in all the published studies, and what it turned out was the oil had a very strong effect on inflammation. Now remember, and the way they know that is by measuring the serum C-reactive protein. Remember in our TOAST program how you, you track your changes to make sure you stay in the game. You track your changes by following your CRP. Well, it turns out your CRP definitely goes down with the oil, but not with the powder and not with the, um, and not with the whole seeds. Oh, that's a really useful piece of information there. What that means is if I'm taking the flax seed just for my sore knee, and I'm not worried about my heart, I'm not worried about my uh, about anything else, they have my lipids and my blood, nothing, nothing about that, I should just take the oil. And how should I take the oil? I should take it either, I'm going to use flax oil at home and get about 30 grams a day, which is a lot of flax oil, or I can just take a thousand milligrams and two, two gel caps and just put those by my toothbrush and take two gel caps before I go to bed when I brush my teeth and boom, I'm off to the races. If, yeah, my joint, my, my, I have a sore neck, but I'm, I'm also, you know, I'm at risk for heart disease and I don't wanna have a heart attack. Well, do the dietary as well. You can take the powder or the, the, the ground up or the seeds and you need about 30 grams a day to get into a good area. So that's half a teaspoon. So take half a teaspoon of flax a day, or you know, even a little bit more if you want to, depending on if you want if you're using it for constipation, it can be really helpful. So you have to kind of decide based on you and you know what's working for you and what um, kind of what makes sense. I think you know to make it easy to remember. Here's the way I think about it. Yeah, oil your joints. Remember the Tin Man. The wizard gave him, a, or Dorothy gave him oil so that he could get moving again and get out of the whole thing. Oz never did, to, did give nothing to the Tin Man. Well, yeah, remember him? Oil is for your joints. So if you want to use flaxseed for your joints, take the oil. Well, it's really been a pleasure uh, having this broadcast for you today. For more information on how to live free of spine and joint pain, that means dietary anti-inflammatory diet. That means when something goes wrong, when you need an MRI, what kind of exercises you should be doing. God forbid, if you do actually need to have surgery, what kind of surgery you should have, how to pick the right doctor for your right problem. That's the stuff we cover on this channel. We would love to have you join us and be a part of it. In the meantime, have a great day. It's been a pleasure um, seeing you today, and I'll look forward to when we get together next.